Hello friends, my name is Ramasu. Today we shall discuss about the topic of architecture of salesforce.com. Uh, friend, today's topic is very interesting, especially if you have interest in CRM or Salesforce. So let's start, friend. First of all, I would request to please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell option as well so that my new videos can reach to you. And also you can follow me on the Facebook and Instagram as well. So friend, Salesforce architecture. Salesforce is one of the leading CRM platform to provide various customized services to its customers, partners and employees. It also provides the platform to build custom apps, pages, components and it performs all uh, these tasks uh, so efficiently mainly because of its architecture that it uh, follows. Salesforce architecture is the multiplayer architecture. It contains a series of layers situated on the top of each other. In the multiplayer Salesforce architecture, the users are at the uh, topmost layer. The users can access a layer below the user layer, which means various clouds offered by the Salesforce such as Sales Cloud, Service Cloud and App Exchange, etc. The third layer is the Salesforce One app which allows the user to access the Salesforce on mobile device. The last layer contains various other Salesforce platforms such as Force.com, uh, Heroku, Exact, Target, Target Fuel, etc. Terminologies used in Salesforce architecture. First one is the app. An app in architecture allows us to collect various things visually. The metadata elements such as classes, objects, visual force, etc. are different from the app and independent. Instance An instance of the Salesforce architecture is the software configuration that appears in front of the user when he logs in to the Salesforce system. It shows the server details of the particular Salesforce organization on which it works. Many Salesforce instances can live, uh, live in a single server. However, it is based on the location of the user and changes according to user location. Superpod Superpod is the set of frameworks and stack balancers it includes outbound intermediary servers, system and capacity foundation, mail servers, SAN texture and various other frameworks that support multiple instances. It provides this service isolation within a data center so that if an issue occurs in one shared component, it may not affect every instance. Org. Org or basically organization is a particular customer of a Salesforce application. When a new user starts a trial on Salesforce.com or DeveloperForce.com, it generates a new org in the system. The org has customizable security and sharing settings that can be customized as per the requirement. Single org can provide support anywhere to any user whether it is multiple licensed individual user accounts, portal user accounts or force.com sites user accounts. Sandbox Sandbox is the instance of the production. It contains the sample data instead of the original data. The sandbox allows the developer to test the various conditions for the development to accomplish the client's expectations for the applications. With the sandbox, developers can create multiple copies of the production organization in different environment. Core architecture of Salesforce. Uh, basically friend, uh, the architecture of the Salesforce can be understood as a series of layers. Each layer of the architecture has different features and uh, f uh, functionality. From here, you can see that core architecture of Salesforce is based on three layers, multi-tenant, metadata and API. So one by one, we shall discuss in detail. 
first we shall discuss about multi tenant layer. Now, what is actually a multi tenant layer? Friend, Salesforce architecture is so popular because of its multi tenancy. The multi tenant architecture means one common application for multiple groups or clients. In such architecture, multiple, multiple clients use the same server, but their uh, OCs are isolated from each other. It means the data of one client is secure and isolated from other groups of client. Because of multi-tenancy, any developer can develop an application upload it on the cloud and easily share it with multiple clients or groups. Multiple users share the same server and applications, hence it is very cost effective. In Salesforce, because of this multi-tenant architecture, all customers data is saved in a single database. As we can see in the diagram, the common application is shared among the three clients. The multi-tenant architecture is much efficient than single tenant architecture. Some differences between both the architecture are as follows. The development cost is much high in single tenant architecture than the multi-tenant because in single tenant each user on the application and the maintenance cost is also owned by the single user. To make any update in the application, the developer needs to do, do it for each client manually. Whereas in multi-tenant, the developer needs to do it in one place and automatically each client will receive the updated version. Now we shall discuss about the metadata architecture. Friend, uh, the Salesforce platform follows the metadata development model. The metadata means data about the data. Now Salesforce stores the metadata in the shared database along with the data. It means it stores the data as well as what data does. As we can see in the diagram, the tenant specific data ensures that the common data is only shared with one tenant, not with another tenant or group. This ensures the security of the data even in the shared database. The security issues get resolved with the multi-tenant architecture because all data is stored on different levels in the form of metadata. We can understood it if well as an example such as if there are three clients A, B and C who contain the shared database in the Salesforce platform. These groups can access their metadata from the shared data. Therefore, each client will have separate metadata. This separate metadata makes ensure each client shares his data only, not others. This increases the security of the shared database with the developer's productivity. Next one is the API services. Uh, friend, the Salesforce metadata driven model allows the developers to create their applications easily with the help of various tools, but sometimes developers need some more functionalities for their apps to make some modifications. To make such modifications, Salesforce provides a powerful source of the APIs. These APIs help the developers to customize the Salesforce mobile application. These APIs allows the various bits of programming to interface with each other and trade data. Without knowing many details, we can connect our apps with other apps. The API provides a simple but powerful and open way to programmatically access the data and any app running on the Salesforce platform. These APIs helps the developers to access apps from any location using any programming language that supports web services like Java, PHP, C Sharp or .NET. 
so uh, friend thank you thanks a lot for watching the video i hope uh, you like this video uh, if you like it please share it with the friends and colleagues and thanks a lot for watching the video thank you friends